Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway World. David Rockwell, who is the founder and president of Rockwell Group, is one of the world's most renowned architects and scenic designers, designing hundreds of hotels, restaurants, and spaces, and designed over 60 Broadway and off-Broadway productions, winning the coveted Tony Award for his best scenic design for She Loves Me. Now, his latest venture is designing the Civilian Hotel, which is located at 305 West 48th Street in the heart of a theater district. The hotel celebrates Broadway and pays homage to the creative artists that make theater happen. And I caught up with David to take us on a tour of his glorious new venture. First, it is so exciting to be sitting with you here in your brand new hotel that you designed, The Civilian. So what room are we in right now? We're in a room that's affectionately known as the Blue Room. Um, and it's in some ways our library because it's a collection of curated objects and pieces uh, done with Paul Taswell. And all of these objects are up for a year. Some of them contemporary shows, some of them uh, historical shows. And it's a chance to just sit amongst fragments that each one, if you look at, triggers all kinds of memories of those pieces. Uh, so it really is our, our inner sanctum, I guess. Yeah. I want to go back to the beginning. I mean, I just finished reading your incredible book, Drama. It was a gorgeous book. It's a coffee table book. If you don't have it, go to Amazon, go anywhere. It's one of the best books you'll ever get about architecture and theater Thank and just learning about this wonderful man. From a very early age, you always wanted to bring people together, didn't you? Yeah, it's true. My, my way of navigating the world and, and kind of engaging was about making things and bringing people together. And it went through many iterations of, you know, just having a garage where I made low-tech Rube Goldberg contraptions or community uh, installations or ultimately community theater with my mom. And then when we moved to Mexico, that interest turned into kind of looking at the world of public space and how theatrical that was. So uh, I think the kind of through line for me is understanding that design all has an audience. And it's all about ways to uh, find strategies to help people connect with other people. Um, and it's, a, it's been an incredibly surprising and wonderful evolution of that. Yeah. So you fell in love with theater in New Jersey, right? I did. On the Jersey Shore, The Deal Players. I recently went to see the incredible uh, Music Man production here and then found photographs of the Deal Players uh, production. You know what's so funny about it, though? I took my daughter back to the place where we did community theater when I was a kid, and my memory of it was this magnificent place, and of course it was a little teeny gym, but it goes to, I think, theater memories, and one of the missions in this hotel and in the Olio collection was to celebrate artists who create those moments who normally don't see on their own, designers, makers, all of the pieces that go into those memories. Because what I love about this, what you've curated through the entire hotel is, you know, theater is a collaborative art. Yeah. And it's, you know, scenic designers, lighting designers, you know, uh, costume designers, everybody comes together to make that cake, to make that show. And that's what you featured here in the hotel. I think it's one of the greatest communities and the greatest symbols of people working together in any creative community. And that's why I did drama looking at the built world through the filter of, of theater. And I also think that um, it's an incredibly generous community. And so we wanted to have a non-for-profit partner, and the American Theater Wing became that, that partner, so that they, there's a kind of uh, you know, charitable participation. And as we went out to ask designers if they wanted to be a part of it, they all said yes. So I felt some responsibility to have every design decision, whether it's a built piece or this 350-piece collection, to be about the kind of amazing making of the, the art form. Yeah. You've never seen boundaries between architecture and theater, have you? No, I think there's more similar. There are different toolboxes. But I think um, I, I look at the similarities because I think there's so many wonderful lessons from how, uh, how theater engages an audience. I think thinking about choreography, if you x-ray any great building that you love or park, you'll find choreography at the heart of it. If you think about places that you love entering with people, transitions and entrances in theater are inspiring. 
Um, and I do think the notion of ensemble in the theater, which we've seen step forward in the early stages of theater coming back with uh, covers having to cover for many different roles, that ensemble, which is everyone involved doing something quite different but telling the same story, is totally applicable to the built world and the architecture world and inspiring for that. See, what I love about everything you design, I mean, I've looked at pictures of all the buildings and spaces and hotels and restaurants. They have a theatrical essence to them because it's all about detail, yeah. right? It's all about perception, where tables are, bringing people into a space, right? It, it's very theatrical. It is very theatrical, and, and theatrical in, in architect's yeah. terms comes sometimes means sparkly that you know but what theatrical I think really means is understanding and behaving theatrically an example you mentioned details I love in theater how props are for the audience but they're also for the actors they're you know part bringing them in character and kinky boots those actors own those machines in a way that made it believable for the audience and that's about backstory and that's the same thing we apply in the built world is backstory so no physical piece is arbitrary it's part of an overall story yeah. the first broadway show you saw was fiddler on the roof it was with herschel bernardi yes. at the majestic theater we've been through all, we've that. Been through all this how magical was that because i remember that was my first broadway show too and i remember everything about the majestic theater that day and it was life-changing for me how life-changing was that for you well that visit to new york was totally life-changing um, and it had several components. Uh, I went to Schraff's for my first meal at a New York City restaurant, which was mind-boggling. And then uh, Fiddler on the Roof, you know, as a 12-year-old, I was mesmerized by the net effect of all of it. Yeah. And those two experiences uh, and the kind of urban experience of being in New York, I think, have been the driving forces in, in, um, in my curiosity for design and what we've been able to do and what we're thinking and continuing doing. I think curiosity is the key element for, for a designer. And I left Fiddler on the Roof wanting to know more about how those, how, how was I made to feel that way, knowing nothing about the story? How did uh, all of that come together and, and, uh, and got to know uh, Boris Aronson's wife, Lisa? And um, it really was a seminal experience for me. Mm -hmm. How has theater influenced the way you design in architecture, and how has your architecture influenced the way you design for the theater? Um, I think the work in architecture, um, in, in very early days in architecture school, I was always writing backstories for the buildings, uh, which drove many of the professors crazy. Some of them thought it was interesting. Um, but there was already that nascent interest. Um, so I think architecture has given me an insight into physical possibilities. The world of uh, kind of studying language, studying different architectural languages, cultural associations, um, great buildings that are memorable. And I think that's something I bring to theater work. Um, what the theater has brought to the architecture is a, a profound understanding that memory and impact is not based on um, permanence. And so that's been an interesting thing in understanding um, when you're creating a building, how you create flexibility, how you allow for evolution. Uh, it's also taught me a lot about how to collaborate with a group. Uh, and um, you know, in, in many cases in an architectural building there'll be uh, m you know, 10, 15 consultants and I now think of it like a theatrical production where I'm trying to drill down and, fit and work on the core story. And of course, in theater, <clears throat> you want each element to work together to tell the story, but allow the performers to have that lead role. That's the same thing in a restaurant where what you're doing is setting the context for the meal. If the meal gets to the table warm and service is great, it makes the design look better. There's a, there's a synergistic relationship. So it, it all kind of works together. Well, like I said, the hotel is gorgeous. Will Thank you take you. us on a mini tour? I would love to take you around. Here we go, a tour with David Rockwell. Let's go. There's a number of pieces that require very low lighting, uh, fragile uh, pieces. This uh, drawing from the amazing Tony Walton, 
who was one of my heroes and passed away recently, um, shows a moment from Pippin. Here, here's the photograph of Ben Vereen in these floating hands. And it was a combination of Bob Fosse, Patricia Jeprop, Jules Fisher, and of course Tony Walton, creating this moment where there's uplighting uh, with these hands and you see faces moving in and out. And this drawing shows how all of that worked together to create that memory. It's just one of my favorite pieces. Again, collaboration. Yep, collaboration. I love the drapes here too. This is really beautiful. Well, this, is, this is a chance for everyone to make a kind of entrance. Yeah. And stairs in theater are so iconic. And I think in architecture, I fell in love with stairs early on as an architect in New York because the spaces I was allowed to design were upstairs and downstairs because the ground floor real estate was so expensive. Yeah. So many of the early places, restaurants, clubs, were all accessed through stairs. And this creates a full circle and gives people a chance to make an entrance. It also seems like those backstage staircases you see to the left or right of a theater, right? It's one of the reasons why we wanted to surround it with a curtain, reclaim brick. Um, all of the finishes uh, allude to a sense of the privilege of being backstage and dropping the curtain. Well, you've done that. So We're in a space that uh, is in some ways like the top of the theater. Yeah. These three arches overlook 48th Street. Doors open and close. So you can have indoor, outdoor space. And then four or five different collections that will change over time. This collection we're looking at uh, was a commission uh, that my co-curators and I asked students and whoever wanted to respond, designers and students, to one of the lyrics from Company, uh, which has now, of course, come back in a beautiful yeah. production. So these are uh, people riffing on the meaning of uh, the lyrics to one of the lines from Company, which we have on the wall there. So it's a city of strangers. Some come to work, some to play. A city of strangers. Some come to stare, some to stay. And the people who you got to design this are amazing. Really amazing group of established designers, uh, students. And I think, you know, coming out of the pandemic, exploring our love and need for the city and how the city really is about people. It's not about hardware. It's about the people that inhabit it. Just beautiful. And I love, so when you come into here, I'm fascinated. This is like anybody who has gone to the theater or wants to design for the theater, this is stunning. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, the public doesn't get to see these amazing yeah. models. And uh, when we reached out to designers to participate, we got great participation. And um, I think it's just an invitation into a totally magical world. Models are so much about how you, w you know, work with the director and yeah. with the company and express how things are going to move. Um, so uh, it's just a, a thrilling collection of uh, pieces here. Because they see it finished when the curtain goes up or just what they see in the theater. That's right. And these are these incredible models, the, just the detail in these to put this all together and is stunning. Will, and this will change over time. We're adding new models next week, so it'll constantly be uh, brought up to date. Gorgeous. I mean, just the detail of the chairs and everything else in here. Now, I love this, this wall just totally blows me away. This, is, this collection on the wall is from? It's from Sarah Crowrich of the New York Times. And we asked her to pick her favorite moments and her favorite photographs. So she curated this, and uh, it really creates an amazing backdrop for the bar. So the photographs that you see here also continue on, on all the hallways. Yeah. Every hallway has six photographs uh, that are of rehearsal process or behind the scenes look. Uh, and the wall that you see there is um, based on the stage door canteen which was very early days for the American Theater Wing, in some ways kind of the inception. And that sits on a wall with a piano center uh, so that if you know, someone comes up here and wants to play music, this can become a spontaneous music spot. Well, this is also an homage, like you said, to this stage door canteen where people used to do this and raise money during the war. That's right. That's amazing. This is stunning. So David, what do you call this oasis? Well, it's a, it's a little terrace and it, it's a ground up building. So the first three floors of this reclaimed brick have these three big arches at the top. And my earliest memory of loving a theater exterior was the Martin Beck, uh, where I saw Dracula and many amazing shows. And uh, so the Martin Beck, now the Hirschfeld, 
has three dramatic arches. And so we wanted to kind of reference that here and uh, anchor this in the community of these 41 amazing Broadway theaters. And it's a kind of indoor, outdoor uh, celebratory space. See, it's funny that you said that because the first time I came up here, I said, this reminds me of the Martin Beck. Yeah. Wow. I love the lights. Aren't those great? I mean, just every, like, the detail in here is and just... What's, what's, yeah. what's surprising about them is the scale of the light fixture just feels like this kind of form floating in space, which is what it is. And there's a beautiful incense. There's a beautiful something out here, right? Is that like the civilian smell? It's beautiful. They may have created their own civilian smell. They didn't, they didn't consult me on that, <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> I like it there's, there's three elevators, and each one, um, as do the hall corridors, have wall covering, custom wall covering, working with uh, amazing costume designers. And this is William Ivy Long from Chicago where his pieces were turned into this wall covering, which is now available from Maya Romanoff to benefit the American Theater Wing. And the, the other elevators have which designers in them? Paul Taswell yeah. and uh, the Toledos. Beautiful. So David, this is beautiful. What room are we in now? We're in the restaurant uh, that'll open shortly. And you know, this is a neighborhood known for these classic watering holes, many of which don't exist anymore and uh, so this is a chance to create a place that is really a, a tribute to theater. When we started to think about it the first person I spoke to was Tony Walton and I had this idea of uh, dotting the room with light fixtures that celebrate all 41 of these incredible houses and uh, Tony had been doing these sketches uh, historically for P Playbill and had 13, I believe, of these exquisite, spontaneous drawings. And so we designed um, brass and wood light fixture with these silk screened on it, and then invited many other um, fantastically talented designers to come on board and finish the 41. So uh, literally, the history of Broadway creates the lighting around the perimeter in here. My final question for you is, what are you the proudest of now that this hotel is open? It's such an homage to the theater, to everybody who loves the theater. What are you the proudest of? Uh, I'm, I think the thing I'm proudest of is that the theater makers embraced it, that it's been embraced by the, the people who inspire me in, in creating uh, my love of theater. Uh, and I think that that bodes well for its future. Congratulations. Thank you for our tour. Thanks for coming by. If you're coming to New York, stay at the Civilian Hotel, come by, eat, drink here, whatever you want to do, but remember to see a show.